Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Salmon Slayers TV. I'm Nick, and today we'll be going over drift fishing. So guys, a little bit about drift fishing. Drift fishing has been around a lot longer than uh, modern day like float fishing and bobber dogging. Float fishing seems to be a little more effective for salmon and steelhead, but sometimes when the water's low, or they just want a different look, drift fishing is the way to go. It's not, you can't really feel the bite as good, but it gets your presentation right on the bottom of the water column, where sometimes that's where you need to get it. And it's just a different way of going about it. So there's really only two ways you can set up your weight system for drift fishing. You can either go fixed weight and use some of these like clamp-on type weights or split shot, or you can go sliding weight. And sliding weight will allow the fish to uh, take the bait and not necessarily feel the weight right away which might give you a better bite ratio, but you're not gonna feel as good and you're not gonna have as much contact at the bottom, or you will, you're just not gonna feel each tap. And a disadvantage is if your weight gets caught in the bottom, your setup can just keep going, sliding, until you stop it and re-reel it in. But first we'll go over fixed. First I like to slide a six millimeter bead on the line to protect the eye of the rod. And then you could put something like this, like a clamp-on weight on. The little rubber inserts to keep them from moving. So once you get your weight on with your bead, you can slide the weight down almost till the end of your line, leave like eight, nine inches. And then you're gonna tie this onto a barrel swivel using a clinch knot. To save time in the video, I'm just going to do an overhand knot just to show you. So after you tie the swivel on, after you tie the swivel on, you're going to want to use about two or three feet of just some light see-through leader to a hook with an egg loop. Anything over three, three and a half feet, I'd basically consider flossing. At that point, the fish might not really be going for your hook. It might just be running into the line, so you don't want to do that. So then you're going to tie the leader to your swivel. And I'll get in touch later on what you can put on your hook. But for now, let's look at the other way you can weight your line. So the other way you can weight your drift setup is with the sliding weight. Once again, you're going to start with the bead to protect the eye. You're going to put the slider on. It's just a hollow tube with a little snap on it. You can pick these up in almost any fishing store. To another bead to protect your knot. So it looks like that. You have the slider with two bumpers your barrel swivel again and you tie a cruise clinch knot but once again I'm just going to do a little overhand knot to save time. Right. And then once you're here what this is going to do is you're going to clip different sizes of weights in this depending on the depth and current you're fishing. So I think this is like a half ounce, just BB shot in a little tube, I guess. Just like that. And what this is gonna do, when you cast your uh, rig into the water, this is just gonna bounce along the bottom and your base just gonna be behind it, swinging in the current. And if you notice, your waist is hanging up on the bottom, you can lighten it up. And if you don't even notice any ticks on the bottom wall, you need to add some more weight to get low. So whether you go sliding or weighted setup, the next thing to do would be to rig something at the end of your leader. And I recommend keeping all your leaders in something like a leader feeder like this. It just keeps all your hooks pre-tied. All you have to do is rip one out. So some things you can put on your egg would on your hook would include uh, beads like this. You can get assortments. Take a look in the fishing box. 
if you're fishing in somewhere shallow but you want a little lift off the bottom, you can use a corky. You just slide it down your line to the bottom and all this does is when your eggs, your bait or whatever or yarn is sitting back behind your weight, it'll lift it up in the water column a little bit. Sometimes you might not want to use a corky if it's really shallow and you know the fish are right on the bottom. I recommend you always tie an egg loop knot on your hook so you can put a chunk of egg, sand shrimp, or even some yarn. One of the benefits to using yarn is when trout and steelhead bite it, it usually sticks into their teeth if the hook doesn't stick them the initial time they bite. So guys, when you're done with the setup, it should look something like this. And honestly, there's so many different combinations of baits and lures you can use on the end of your hook in drift fishing. It honestly just comes down to personal preference and knowledge of the river you're going to be fishing. So with that, we'll take a look at when everything goes right, what it can look like. You just got smashed. There you go. Always got it. That's a nice one. Got a little cutthroat, guys. Playing them on the lamb glass. Very popular. Alright, let's get this fish in the net. So I hope you enjoyed this video on drift fishing. If you have any requests on future videos or different techniques, let us know down in the comments below. And with that, tight lines.